Hello everyone, and welcome to our Hackolate tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to be explaining some of the fundamentals of the Hackolate product set. And we're going to do that by explaining some of the main concepts behind it. We've already talked about polyglot data modeling and metadata as code in separate videos. But in this video, we're actually going to talk about an overarching concept that we've recently published about, which is what we call domain-driven data modeling. The reason why we've come up with this new concept is we wanted to explain to people why some of these fundamental concepts you know, like um, uh, polyglot data modeling or metadata as code, why they are so important and why it's so interesting to apply them in a real world context. Specifically, we also wanted to un make people understand that domain driven data modeling is a solution to a problem that many of us have encountered in complex data modeling exercises. Sometimes, people try to make these data models too large and too complex, and that makes them counterproductive. They very quickly start looking like a big ball of mud. This thing, this ball of mud, leads to so many pointless discussions between different stakeholders in your organization that it can really lead to massive project delays. And we want to help you solve that. We want to make you understand that there is a different way to do this, that smaller, manageable data models are actually the blueprint for modern, complex applications. Please also think about this as how you work with industry data models. Industry data models are an example, often, of how people make these problems too large, too big, and they apply them in the wrong fashion. So let's dig right in. We're going to talk about some of the main principles that we think are part of domain-driven data modeling. This is heavily inspired by domain-driven design, which is a fantastic application to software development practices of some of these concepts. We're applying these same concepts to the data modeling domain. The first principle that we're going to be talking about here is how you should really focus on the core domain. You really want to concentrate your efforts for maximum impact and really limit the scope of your data modeling exercise as much as you possibly can. Don't make it too big, don't make it too complicated, really focus on the core. The second principle is that in order to be able to focus on the core, you actually need to break down complex problems into smaller ones. We call this a bounded context, right? We create these limited domains that you can focus on and that you can really solve the one problem at a time. Obviously, you still need to be able to keep the bigger picture in mind and make sure that the bigger problem also gets solved, but the way to get there is obviously by tackling this complexity one by one. The next principle that we'll talk about is that really when you talk about data modeling, you're talking about applying a tool, a communication tool that allows people to understand what the data that they are working with actually means and what the context is that they are working in. That's the core function of data modeling. And that means that you have to start using a common vocabulary. So in your data model, as you use it as a communication tool, you really want to focus on making sure that everyone understands and everyone uses and that you promote this common vocabulary. The next principle that I think we should all learn from is that it becomes much easier to work with data models as you are able to aggregate related objects together. This is a lesson that we've learned in other um, fields, specifically the data engineering field, where things like NoSQL databases have sprung up, new types of databases have sprung up that really promote this as well. Work with aggregates, work with related objects that are construed of a number of different other objects so that they represent the business entity that you are working with. Cluster these things together if they belong together. Obviously, this means that you also want to be breaking up the problem into bounded contexts. Another principle that we think is a core part of domain-driven data modeling is the collaboration aspect of working together between technical staff and subject matter experts to reach a shared understanding. You really don't want to have a conflict situation between the subject matter expert, the business user, and the data engineer. No, you want to use the communication tool that data models represent to reach this shared understanding of what the problems are that we're trying to solve. And again, as we break down the problem into smaller parts, it makes total sense to take an iterative approach to the development of your data models and your applications, which is a core element of agile development so that you can really create this solution step by step, refine it as you go along, evolve it as you go along, and develop a richer application step by step. 
All of this relates to the core of what we try to do with Hackolade. We try to reconcile business and IT through a shared understanding of the context and the meaning of data. That's the core mission of what we're trying to do with Hackolade. And some of the tools that we develop are obviously related to domain-driven data modeling. Polyglot data modeling has a core role to play here as has um, metadata as code. Polyglot data modeling provides this technology agnostic data model that allows you to generate physical schemas for a wide variety of different targets. There's a separate tutorial on this topic, obviously, but please understand that this fits into the domain-driven data modeling approach. And of course, metadata as code is going to co-locate the code and the data models so that there is a single source of truth for business and technical stakeholders, so that the subject matter experts and the data engineers are always looking at the same artifacts. This is how you achieve domain-driven data modeling. We've actually provided people with a really nice infographic, which we will obviously be sharing later on, and which you may recognize a little bit from our presentation here. So um, please take a look at that and also don't forget that we offer a wide variety of reading materials online, on our blog, in the books, right? There's a wide variety of books these days on specific data modeling techniques like MongoDB data modeling, but also for near a Oracle 23C, Elasticsearch, and there's more coming in the near future. Please follow us on the socials as well. And always remember that you can always try Hackolate by downloading it yourself and giving it a, a spin. Thank you for paying attention. And I hope this was a useful session and I'll wish you a wonderful rest of your day.